The first step in any repair is seeing if you're capable of doing it in your home garage. The next step is starting to price out some parts, and uh, I normally end up at Rock Auto, especially if you don't mind waiting a couple days. They have a great selection, they have different quality levels, and great prices. Uh, I'm, I'm a believer in Rock Auto, and if you mess up, they have a great return policy. Rock Auto has never let me down. Well, since this is one of the first times I've really touched this car for any type of maintenance, I thought possibly we could use the jack supplied by the factory to lift this up while we did the, the brake change. But well, unfortunately, there's no jack because we have run flat tires. And uh, so we'll just have to use the floor jack that I use on all the other cars. It also looks like there's no special lug nuts on this, so you don't need any special key to take them off, which is a good thing. And uh, it looks like a 17 millimeter socket will fit all these pretty easily. It looks like there's plenty of room, so you don't have to worry about damaging your rim at all. So. So far, I think we got this covered. Here's our first look at it. Everything looks pretty normal here. It looks like it's a standard setup. And the only thing that might be a problem is putting in the uh, wear sensor. It looks like it hitches into something that is right where all these wires lead. But we'll figure that out. Can't be that hard. The very first thing we're gonna need is a 17 millimeter wrench for this and a 14 millimeter socket for this. Now you're gonna need a more narrower wrench. Mine would not fit in there. I had several of them that I tried and they wouldn't fit. So what I did is I searched and I, I saved anything I find. We had some furniture delivered and this wrench is a little thinner and I found that it fit in there perfect. So we're gonna use that and the 14 millimeter socket to loosen up the calipers. Now that we have the caliper bolts off, we can take off and it's loose enough where it should slide off and it's sliding off pretty easily. I also have a box here and the box is going to hold it once I take this off. Okay, I'm pulling off to the wire and since I'm replacing that it really doesn't matter what happens to it. So. wire down in there, white, so we can see better. You see the wire, and you notice that the calipers are attached to the frame, and uh, now we just have to ease this off. I'm going to slide the sensor off and give us more room, which gives me a lot more room down here. Got the caliper here. Now I can take the other brake off. And this is the brake that has the sensor attached to it. So we're going to pay attention to it to see how it came off. So 
so we put that on. Now, this is the reason the inside pad wore a lot faster. So now I see why the sensor went off and see how that goes back together. So the next thing we're going to do is put a, we're going to close the caliper up so we can put the new brakes on. Next thing I'm going to do is figure out how the sensor comes out. And it looks like it's pretty simple. Let's see. It just comes out just like that. Okay. Oh, there's a little, see there's a clip right there. So it just slides right in. And the important thing to remember too is it goes through this little hole in the caliper. So we're making good progress. What I'm going to do now is push this back in to make room for the new brake pads. And you can do it a bunch of ways with different tools, but I bought this for a couple dollars at one of the auto parts stores. And I'm going to use that to push this in. Using old, the brake pad that I just took off of there so it doesn't go down into the hole. And it pushes nice and even. And now, I just do this. Turn by turn, and it goes in. If you didn't do this, you wouldn't have room for the new brakes. You wonder why they wouldn't fit. it's pretty flush so now sometimes you have older cars and people add brake fluid all the time when it's down a little bit and if you keep adding brake fluid when you do this you might have to take it out of the reservoir They can go any further. If I didn't use this brake pad, there's a hole in here. I'd have to go down here, so it's a lot easier to use an old brake pad to help push that. Well, what we're going to do next is loosen up a couple of these and see if we can just get enough play so we can get in there. And I found that a metric eight socket will get in there, so. That's my next thing, so I'm just going to feel something coming. Yes, we got it. It's going to stay in the fender, so that's good. And look what we found. There's what we're after right there. So another thing is uh, the reason we do one slide at a time is so that uh, if we need a reference, we can take the other side apart and figure out how it goes back together. Um, so I'm going to start taking a few things apart here. I'm going to go. I'm going to gently pry the old sensor off. Boy, in the neck, as you can see, it came off pretty easy. And now I have the whole sensor here and it looks like it comes from the back which is a good thing so remember that it goes down to this one here it doesn't go up like this we put it back together now i'm going to peel this back and sort of see what keeps this in so i did this okay uh, okay looks like there's a little holder there and i can get that This out right here, and then do this next. Looks like we pull. All right. I took it outside here so I have better access to it, and I think if I just do this, pop that up, that this should all come off. I have our new sensor here, and hopefully it will pop right in. 
popped right in. Now I'm gonna put that back into where I got the other one out of. Hope you can see that. I'm gonna try to follow with, look at the other one. And it looks like it goes in here, and it goes in here, and it looks like it's back in where it was. I'm not really happy with all the dirt that's in there, but it is what it is. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put the that back in here. I'm gonna pop this back in there. Sometimes the little things to get things back in. So I just put a hammer. Next, we're going to put back the bolts that we took out. Now here's one other thing that I've sort of learned to do. Is a lot of times when people do brake jobs, they don't put they don't put new grease on the sliders. And I always put new grease on the sliders. I learned that because they uh, they work a lot. And sometimes they can freeze up if you don't do that. So I just use high temperature grease and I put a little bit on there and I put them in there and I'm happy. So now I've made sure I put these in. I've made sure the rubber seals all around. I'm gonna clean these off next where the brake the brake pads go and I might even put a little bit of anti-seize in there although they didn't do it in the factory and I think we're going to be ready to put everything back together we're cleaning off these surfaces a little bit where they're going to slide a little bit, which are here and there. And just a little bit. Just a little bit. And push this in and push it down. And they're in there now. I got one. We're going to try to get that back one in there. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the sensor on. And we did run the electronic sensor through that little window. I'm sure a lot of people will forget that. We want to put this the sensor right there. It should snap into place. And now we're going to go in back. Okay, what we should do now is we get it lined up. We push it back in and down and it's in. Now I sort of did something before that I shouldn't have. I um, put the sensor in and it made it hard to put it in. So now I'm going to put the sensor in. And again, it's really important to have slid the sensor through the window in the caliper. I'm going to slide the sensor in. Obviously, the sensor needs to go towards the, the pad. And and the sensor is now in. I'm putting the caliper back around this. And then I'm going to go in and get the bolts. Next, I'm going to take my 17 millimeter wrench that's a little flatter than most normal ones and I have a 13 millimeter socket and I'm going to put these back in. Now, you know, I decided not to use anti-seize on this because it looks like they put some type of a thread locker here and uh, these look pretty good, and pretty new, so I'm not going to worry about it this time. Uh, so now we're going to go and we're going to put those in. My first First, I'm just going to line them up and get them in the holes. And I got the first one going. And it's close. Okay. Now I'm going to put the second one in. And I'm going to line that up. And just get it going. And, and my 
think I feel I feel I'm in both of them right now. I'm gonna give everything a quick look. Just make sure it's okay. I have calipers on. I have not put this back in the in the slot yet, the retention slot. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the uh, caliper bolts back in. And again, you don't have to over tighten those. And uh, but everything looks good so far. Tightening up this, and you might want to over tighten it. Just snug it down and back the wrench out a little bit. And it's, there you go. It's nice. It's not too tight and it's not loose. I'm going to do the same thing to the top one now. Okay. We're going to do the same thing to the top one. We're going to snug it down. And like I said, you don't want to over tighten these. Just do it hand tight. Nothing's moving, and I think we're good here. Next, I'm going to slide this onto the mount. Just sort of there. So now I have it here. I've connected it here. I've connected it into where the sensor mount is, and I think we're good. The next thing I'm going to do is put anti-seize on all of these and that will help us get everything out next time these are all these are the lugs the lug nuts that hold the wheels on what we're going to do next is put the wheel back on i have a little bit of anti-seize on all of the lug nuts and I'm lining up the holes of the pan and the neck, especially with this size, because here, the, uh, the lug nut, you have to go sort of find the holes. Uh, I'm used to having studs come out, but luckily, it seems like you can see it's pretty well. So what I do is I use, I have my feet, I use my feet, lift it up a little bit. in there. All right, I have the torque wrench all set up. This is where we're going to do a star shaped pattern. Hear the click, it's good. Go to one on the opposite side. Hear the click, go to one on the opposite side. And just make sure that you have a nice even set when you do this. And then just to make sure I got them all, which I know I did, I'm just gonna go around each one. Well, it's interesting. We're working on the passenger side and I just realized that there's no sensor on this side. So this job's gonna be a lot easier. There's no, there's no harness to keep the sensor where it's supposed to be. There's no harness coming out of here. So I'm assuming that's the way it's supposed to be since the car is brand new. So again, there's no sensor on the passenger side of the car. this repair and uh, first thing you're going to need is a 17 millimeter socket to first loosen the lug nuts and then take them off. You need a jack to lift up the car. To keep you safe you need a jack stand and a wheel block. Once the wheel's off you're going to need to get to the uh, calipers and to loosen up the sliders and you're going to need a very thin 17 millimeter wrench. On the other part of that bolt, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket. You're gonna depress the piston with a tool that looks like this. You're gonna pry that little plastic nut off with tools and, and equipment that looks like this. 
the fender washers, you're going to use a 8 millimeter socket to take off. We use high temperature brake grease on the sliders. We use anti-seize on some key fasteners. And to put it all back together, we used a torque wrench, again with a 17 millimeter socket on it. So these are all the tools that you should have and uh, you'll be successful. Well, I've also found that when you're doing something like this, you have your wheel off, so it's a good chance to take a good cleaner and to just clean the whole back of the wheel. There's a lot of gunk that sticks up in there, and I'm not doing a great job, but it's a lot better than it was. So just something that you can do to uh, help keep your car looking good. The news is that the front brakes are in, but the bad news is that the light is still on. We'll have to figure this one out.